third one on trig. Um, here's our trig graphs. Remember, to, remember them? How we developed them? Okay. Uh, so I mentioned some values that we need to know. We looked at the triangles: 30-60-90 triangle, the 45-45-90, and the 3-4-5 triangle. And I said there's some values we need to know from those, as well as the graph. And thinking about those graphs, the table values that we need are look like this. We've got 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and 180. And we've got to do, if this is x, we want sine of x, cos of x, and tan of x. And we should be able to write this down and create this table from scratch in about a minute if we know them. So sine x, cos x, and tan x of naught. Sine x, the graph starts at naught. This one is one that's naught. At 90, sine gets up to one. Cos comes down to naught. Tan is not defined or infinite. Sine x at 180 is back to naught. Cos has gone down to minus one. And tan has come back to zero again. Sine of 30 is a half. And that's the same as cos of 60. Sine of 60 is root three over two. And that's the same as cos of 30. Sine of 45 and cos of 45 are the same, one over root two. And tan of x, one over root three. This is root three. And this is the easy one. So that didn't take long. And then we need to consider the graphs. Uh, so here's the naught 90, sorry, naught 180 and 360 for the sine graph. And naught 180, 360, the cos graph is at one, minus one and one. Tan is naught infinity and back to naught at 180 and so on. Okay, so thinking about the sine graph, there's lines of symmetry and there's also rotational symmetry. Um, if we draw a line down there, we can see that the right hand side of that line would flip over and reflect onto the left hand side and vice versa. And the same at this point. So this is 90, this is 270, <clears throat> happens again at uh, 90 more than 360, which is 450, and so on. And on the left hand side, on the negative side, we've got minus 90, line of symmetry, another line of symmetry at minus 270, and so on. The cos graph, lines of symmetry at 0, 180, 360, 540, 720, and so on. And also negative 90, negative 180, and the tan graph has no line symmetry whatsoever. They've all got rotational symmetry. Sine graph is rotational symmetry about symmetrical about zero. If we turn it around, look about zero. Look, it's the same. It looks exactly the same as it did before. On the right hand side, from zero goes up, comes down at one eighty, and on the left hand side it goes down and back up at one, to minus one at minus ninety and then back up. The cos graph, turning around here, it looks exactly the same look. And the tan graph, the rotational symmetry is at zero. So what that means is that putting those two together with the sine graph, line symmetry at 90 and at 270, and rotational symmetry at zero, that means that sine of x is the same as minus the sine of minus x, it means that sine of x is the same as sine 180 minus x. It means that sine of x is the same as sine. So we've got symmetry there. Sorry, symmetry here. Here's our 180 because it means, look, if we've got an angle of 30, you know, the y value is a half, then we've got a distance of 30 degrees. If we start at 180 and we come back 30 degrees, 250, the y value is exactly the same. It also means that if we do, if what we can add 360 on, uh, but we could take the values away from 540 because we've got a line of symmetry to 270. So we go across, I don't know, to this one. What's that? That's 180, 200. 220, 
the sine of one uh, sine of 220 is this one and if we take 220 away from 540 we get 320 320 is about here and the y values will be the same look yeah this y value here for the 320 degree angle and these two angles add up to 540 and so the y values are the same if we rotate so let's choose a value sine 60 it's root 3 over 2 sine of minus 60 should be minus root 3 over 2 So that's this one here, look, and we can see that by rotating around the zero. So at minus 60, the value looks the same. It's in the same position that it was before I rotated it. And we've got some other things with the cos graph. Because of line symmetry is zero, then we can write that the cos of x is the same as cos of minus x. We don't have to change the sign like we did for sine we know that cos of x is equal to cos of 360 minus x for the same reason that it was 180 minus x on this one so if we choose an angle of 60 and the y value is a half for 60 then if we go across this angle here will be 60 less than 360. the period of the cos graph is the same as the period of the sine graph is it comes back to where it started from every 360 degrees so if we start at three start at zero on the cos graph angle zero and we go a distance of 60 and then go up to the graph the y value is a half if we go backwards from 360 if we go backwards 60 so that distance is 60 this angle is 300 the cos of 300 is the same as cos of 60 and we could do we can choose similar like we did up here we had 540 minus x is the same as sine of x uh, the cos graph if we continue that we get round to 720 so a line of symmetry at 360 if we choose an angle of what's that 250 or thereabouts 250 less than 720 is 470 well, there's, 4, there's 450, 470 is about here. And look, we've got the same y value on, on that bit of the graph. Because 300 and 420 add up to 720. The distance that we've gone across there to get to our 200, uh, what was it? 300, 300 degree line is the same as the distance back from 720 to get through to get to 720 degree line got it rotational symmetry about 90 so the cos of 60 is plus a half that's because the rotational symmetry that's 30 less than this one if we go 30 more than 90 then we get down to minus a half because the rotational symmetry at that point the angle 90 yeah can we see the graph looks the same as it did there tan graph we've got no line symmetry but rotational symmetry here so the tan we can write down tan of x is the same as like the, like the sine graph tan of minus x so tan of 60 is the same as minus tan of or 50 in this case is the same as minus the tan of minus 50 so if tan of 50 is 1 and a bit, tan of minus 50 is minus 1 and a bit. All right.